A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I've just finished reading an extraordinary book written by the Irish-American author Colin McCann his novel, A Paragon, tells the story of two very real-life tragedies, the deaths of two young girls, Abir, a Palestinian Arab, and Smadar, an Israeli Jew. These tragic tales are accounted by their bereaved fathers, Bassam Aramin and Rami El Hanan, two men whom I am privileged to count as friends. Bassam and Rami have spoken to many of the groups of pilgrims I have brought to Jerusalem, and the accounts of the loss of their daughters, one to a suicide bomber and the other to a trigger-happy Israeli soldier, never fail to move their audiences. But yet more moving is the fact that these two men have a profoundly deep love for each other, a love and a respect forged in the awful melting pot of grief. Speaking of each other as brothers, with a physical embrace and manifest affection, their audiences are constantly struck by how remarkable it is that these two men, who exist on either side of what many think is the most intractable political and military divide in the modern world, how these two men love and do not hate each other. I'm very far from sure that I would be capable of similar feelings and behaviour if one of my two sons had suffered the fate of the daughters of these two men. And in Eastertide of any season of the year, this worries me. It worries me in Eastertide, for it is in the light of the resurrection that Christians hear God's invitation to eternal life, an eternal life that begins in the waters of the font and which links our lives to the resurrection life of the risen Christ. Jean-Paul Sartre is famous for his statement that hell is other people. And as I finished reading a paragon in Holy Week, it struck me that if either in Rami or Bassam's shoes, I might understand all too clearly what Sartre meant. For to be trapped in eternity with those with whom I had fallen out, or those to whom I had failed to show love, would be a terrible fate. But God in Christ calls us beyond this, which is why, at the climax of Luke's Gospel, which I just read, Jesus tells his followers that, in the wake of his rising from the dead, what is to be preached to all nations is repentance and forgiveness of sins. Repentance and forgiveness. Not a triumphalist message about the power of life over death, but the offer of repentance and forgiveness a proclamation to begin in Jerusalem and to go out to all nations. It's no wonder that despite their joy, the disciples are wondering and disbelieving, for that is a tall order. And that's why the risen Christ has to open their minds to understand the scripture, to understand what God has been banging on about since the beginning of time. And then he says to them, you are witnesses of these things, or in the original Greek, you are martyrs, for that is what the word witness is in the Greek of the New Testament. 
It's been my privilege to get to know Rami and Bassam, two men who have used their grief to model and proclaim repentance and forgiveness right there in Jerusalem. And I commend their story to anyone and everyone, but most especially I commend it to those of us called by Christ to follow him as witnesses and martyrs. For if we cannot tell the world of repentance and forgiveness, then there will have been no point in love triumphing over the grave. Amen.